Hey everybody, I got a new microphone. Tell me what you think of it. Should I stick with it or just go back to the old one? Anyways, today we're gonna go over the king of the slideshow commentary community himself, Spockdor. Or should I say, former king of the slideshow commentary community. Because as some of you already know, he recently uploaded a video saying he's quitting commentary altogether. But why? Is it because of Lin Lin's and Heaton's videos on him? Is it because of his The Idea video? Or because he's finding more success success in his IRL job? Maybe it's because of the Hopeless Pizzas drama. Well, I don't know for sure, but I think it's a combination of a bunch of things and not just one big thing. But before I go any further, I think I need to explain to you who Spockter is. Because I, because I got a lot of new subscribers who are probably out of the loop. Spockter started out in the DeviantArt ranting community. A community started by Sonic93, who I have done a few videos on and you should totally go check those out. <laughs> one of them was with Spockter, ironically, <laughs> the one time I can remember collabing with him. And he was friends with other DeviantArt ranters, like Lulubell, the name's Junkie, Fayghost, Chaos55T, and others. Ironically, all of them have been cancelled one way or another, mostly because they came after me. All but Fayghost, he got cancelled from something else. Maybe that's one of the reasons as to why Spockter quit. He saw all of his friends get butt fucked and I guess he thought he was up next on the chopping block. He grew bigger and faster than most people in the DeviantArt ranting community through his videos on Birdie, animation memes, and talking about storytime animators. Remember when that was like a huge thing? Even I did that. Eventually, he became both the biggest ranter and commentator to ever use an avatar. At this point, he was king. He was on top of the world. He was invincible! But then, Spockter had to deal with his first big bit of controversy. Stories in Pentagon, names that are infamous all over this corner of the internet, came up with a plan to take Spockter down by using false allegations against him and uploading their videos all at once. This caused a bandwagon to start against Spockter, and many of his friends turned on him. Dozens of videos were uploaded mocking him. He lost thousands thousands of subscribers. But then, when all hope was lost, everything turned around. Several commentators like Ponder Sprocket, PK Russell, Manga Common, me, and a few others all came out to defend him. And this yet could be another reason as to why Spockter quit. What happened to him was 100% for sure traumatizing. Sure, I've also received false pedo allegations along with false racism allegations and somehow false murder allegations. But none of those false allegations were spread to the same level as to what Spockter had to deal with. There are still people to this day who believe the false allegations spread about him. Uh, by the way, everyone, if someone receives pedo allegations and they're still uploading on YouTube without receiving dislike bombs on all of their recently uploaded content, then those allegations are most likely false. But false allegations do come with a silver lining. It's pretty much the best worst thing that can happen to you on YouTube. In layman terms, being falsely accused and surviving it basically gives you an overshield. People become a lot less critical of what you say. People are not looking to take you down because, well, look what happened to the last people who tried that. You're given a lot of free passes and people are more empathetic to you. The stories in Pentagon drama was seen as the biggest drama this community ever had to deal with until the Toby slash Hopeless Peaches slash Creepshow art drama happened, but we'll get getting to that a little later. After stories in Pentagon were thoroughly and utterly debunked, many people took down their videos they made on Spockter and apologized to him. Well, everyone, except for a certain blue pony named Fran. Fran only took down her video for damage control and her apology was just god awful. And a lot of people said that I made the video for views. Um, I never make a video for views. I n never do. I just enjoy talking about things. Everyone was agreeing with me, but then as soon as Ponder Sparkle uploaded that video, everyone started to bombard me. And, you know, that really shows the bot mentality. And in my opinion, those people that bombarded my comment section thought the exact same thing as me before Ponder uploaded that video. The people that, like, made all these videos and stuff, we thought he was a pedophile. That's not something to be taken lightly. Um, this is the internet. You... It, the internet is not his entire life. He can go outside and get a job or something. Like, it, it, his persona on the internet is not his entire life. He can easily come back to any other community, or even this community again as someone else. 
He can disguise himself as someone else, and nobody will know because he's good at disguising himself as Spockter Theory. Fran was bashed by Spockter, Ponder, and Heaton Mitsuru. The last of those three got into a bit of controversy, being called out by Doodle Tones and Gwisman for, <gasps> oh my god, <laughs> showing private DMs between Chunky and Fran. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was apparently a big issue back then. Like, don't get me wrong, I don't really agree with DMs being shared, but I personally think Heaton got way more backlash than they deserved. Maybe I'm missing something here. If Doodle would like to come on and explain things, well then, she's more than welcome to. Ah, so that's the ulterior motive to getting me to edit this part of the video. God damn it, Jar, I don't got the time for this. Alright, hello, hi, I'm Doodle Tones, slideshow commentator, and not a DeviantArt ranter. Now shortly after I started my Just a Robot persona, I quickly fell back into the old commentary group I was a part of. You know, the small ones with people like Doodle Tones, Icy Hazard, the name's Junkie. Yep, because of the Doodle Tones drama and the Icy Hazard drama, I got sucked back into the old community that used to shun me. Seriously, call Spockter a slideshow commentator and call me a DeviantArt ranter? This shit's so backwards. Anyway, so I'm here to tell you all about a drama that happened solely within the slideshow commentary community. An incredibly small and niche community of commentators that focus on critiquing, debunking, and arguing individual videos over talking about whole topics. We're usually seen as the pettier, more unnecessary of the commentary communities, but we're weird in that we like critiquing videos. It's fun, and we usually don't have big outbursts like the other communities do. Our drama is usually pretty contained. That said, no one's immune to stupid, and we in the SCC definitely had our moment in 2018 following the wrap-up of the drama surrounding Spockter. Which Jar kinda already touched on, but there's definitely context here he's missing out on. To explain, we have to go back before Atari Pentagon and Stories made their videos, to a couple videos made on the more broader scope of the DeviantArt ranting community by users Simply Dad and YoYo3635, now known as Squid Slushy. Both these videos contained general criticisms of the DeviantArt ranting community at the time. Simply Dad's video goes over a variety of topics ranging from taking trolls seriously to letting smaller commentators get under your skin, which was then followed by a whole thing about humiliation, to trying to escape criticism by acting like you never did anything bad in your whole career, to biases that audience will have listening to their favorite content creator. You know, very generic talking points when talking about critics you don't really much care for. I've heard these same criticisms pointed at a variety of creators about a dozen times in the seven years that I've been a commentator. It's just kind of whatever. It's not a great video, but I'd be pressed to call it the worst of the two. That goes to Yo-Yo's, the much more important of the two. Because Yo-Yo's video was out to spill tea more directly under the guise of more generalized criticism of the community. Specifically focusing on the names junkie. You know, before we all collectively realized that he's a coward. Look, I've got my hangups with Junkie. If the last video that I was on with Jar says anything, I think the dude's got stuff to address and apologize for, but Yo-Yo's video was really bad at covering him. And while there's a lot more I could say about that video, I don't want to drag out Jar's video more than I have to. So if you want more info, I'll direct you to the other commentating robot who did this exact video before Jar did as Pink Robot goes more in detail about these two videos. That said, I will point out the important segment in Yo-Yo's video relating to one Deltora251, who, after being shouted out in a Junkie video, turned around and just generally talked mad shit about Junkie in the comments to Simply Dad's video, saying that she didn't really need his approval to do what she was doing. Which pissed off Junkie, and personally, I'd say understandably so, because it's just generally rude to be praised like that, and not just not accept it, but get actively upset that you were praised to begin with. Like, it's not even like Junkie was necessarily condescending in his shout-out. A question for all of you. Do you ever see a channel that first came out and wasn't that impressive at first, but suddenly they just explode in quality? Well, that's pretty much what happened with Del Toro. She made her channel based on this character who... Nothing against you, Del Toro, wasn't the greatest... Well, looks-wise to a much better looking and more eye-catching persona. She's more consistent with her upload schedule from what I can tell they upload regularly on a two-week basis. I personally think that's an okay threshold for creating and uploading content. Less for dramatic effect because good reviews 
simply don't sell, and it is the bad, horrific, and atrocious OCs that take the hit and rake in the most views and subscribers. Also, dragons. I approve of this. Now why is she at number 3 and not higher? Well, it's mainly because she just got back into YouTube and remade a lot of her content. But hey, that's a good thing. It shows that she's willing to learn and better herself. So when you get the chance, check her out. You will not regret it. Like, I'm so unsure as to where Del Toro's hostility about this comes from. Anyway, back on track. This pissed Junkie off, to which led into him venting in Ponder Sprocket's private chat, The Fiendish Cavern, where an ex-commentator Autumn Kohai talked about maybe doing a video on Del Toro. Junkie then followed that up, trying to hype up Autumn with an, albeit maybe overly emotional, fucking annihilate her comment. And the most shocking thing to me was that there was another person in the server he was talking with who mentioned how they wanted to make a rant video on Del Toro, and, and Junkie, you know, word for word, said fucking annihilate her. I remember when we found out about Yo-Yo getting her hands on that screenshot because she wasn't in Ponder's chat at the time, so someone had to leak that to her. I did a video pointing that out at the time as it was fucking sketchy, not helped by how out of context the screenshot itself was. I think anyone in the right mind would call this out. And it was this event that led to what happened later. Twofold, actually. Because on the one hand, if you remember, one of the allegations against Spockter during the Pentagon and Atari videos was that Spockter was very supportive of porn of his fursona? Scale sona? Whatever you call it, I'm not a furry. Well, it was actually Yo Yo who initially brought that up, putting a spotlight on Spockter at the tail end of the video. Like, the very, very tail end of the video, like post credits. Does anyone else find it kind of weird that Spockter is underage and very open about that fact, yet openly encourages very sexually suggestive and explicit art of his characters? Like, mmm, just some food for thought. It's, fun fact, actually where Pentagon and Story's videos even stemmed from to begin with, as sourced by Mimi Diggs during a Ponder Sprocket video. Yet, this wasn't even something I initially noticed until Pink Robot and Aaron Tempest pointed out these individual things, and I just kind of connected the dots. It, it makes a lot of sense when you really look at it that way. Anyway, the second thing that happened from this situation was that I was expected to keep to that standard, because previously that year, I was held under a microscope being a walking contradiction. And when Heaton's video came out and she called out Fran under the guise of faking an anxiety attack, I had figured a video had to be made. Not helped by the words of a certain other ex-commentator telling me Heaton's video was toxic. I made sure to reach out to Junkie before jumping to conclusions, or at least to make sure that the screen cap was used with permission, and he had told me something along the lines of him not knowing a video was even going to be made. Something that he apparently also told the other person who jumped on Heaton's case about that video, Next Bliss who later confirmed this to be the case in a follow-up video about the situation. So the thing is that Luxter here, might as well call him Luxter the Lifesaver for helping me figure this out so quick, brought up a good point of, you don't think there might have been a chance you were wrong there? And that's a very good point. Didn't you all wonder why I assumed that, with so much uncertainty, especially with another similar possibility where I said I didn't know about that for certain? Well, the truth is, I actually did consult Junkie about this. I know, I know, I didn't want to tell you that either. He didn't want more drama, so I didn't bring it up in the prior video. The thing is that I asked him if he did get permission from Heaton to show the DMs and all. I gave him a yes or no question, he gave me a vague answer about it, and I interpreted it as a no. So this led Gwis and I into doing our videos. Both sucked. I'd argue his was significantly worse, but that doesn't detract from the badness of my own video, and it's not really a competition, because my video is still pretty bad. But we did these videos under the notion that this was a repeat of the yo-yo situation that happened just months prior, and we wanted to keep consistency. So we both got on to Heaton's case about it. Spoilers, she wasn't that bad, and in actuality, Junkie actually gave Heaton full permission to use the screenshot of the conversation between he and Fran. And he only confessed to lying to me in DMs only after Heaton had already gotten in trouble for her video, 
and she decidedly had cut off the rest of the slideshow commentary community. Years later, and Heaton and I patched things up, were friends again, but I still feel terrible about it all myself. Gwiz, I imagine, has no regrets for his involvement, considering the rant he made on the community like a year or two after the fact where he pretended he was never a part of the community to begin with. See, I've known some people that have vented to me about drama involving an obscure corner of the internet, and it's given me a lot of stories to tell you about it. And let me tell you, if I was in this YouTube community, I'd dedicate the rest of my videos to denying it. Kindly eat a bag of dicks, Gwiss. I see the Freedom Trail has done you no good. Anyway, I hope this gives a bit more insight to this particular drama, because might as well be an SCC member that shares a bit of forbidden knowledge with you all at what goes on in that community. No one else would have known about it otherwise, because no one else seems to know this community exists. Anyway, I'm gonna let Jar get back to his video. I've talked your ears off enough. Hope you guys enjoy. Now you see, while sharing private DMs isn't really the best thing to do, Junkie made Fran seem 10 times worse by saying, Oh, I shared those DMs with Heaton in confidence, not knowing what they would have been used for. I never expected them to use it in a video. So Junkie threw Heaton under the bus and they disappeared from the internet for quite a while. Now why am I bringing this up? Well, it will be important later. Just put a pin in it for now. So Spockter continued to grow on YouTube, going over the Madame drama, the Sonic 93 drama, but most of all, the Yandere Dev drama. Holy fuck did those videos blow up! But then it happened. A drama so massive, and with so many people involved. A drama with more alliances, backstabbing, and lies than any other drama before. For this corner of the internet happened. The Toby slash Hopeless Peaches slash Creepshow art drama. If you want a rundown of this drama, you can check out my second video on Junkie that I did with Doodle Tones. The first quarter of that video basically recaps everything you need to know about the Toby slash Hopeless Peaches slash Creepshow art drama. And if you want a long deep dive that goes over everything you could possibly need to know about the drama, check out Cecil's McFly's video. Spockter was just about the last person to make a video about the Toby drama, and if I can be completely honest, I have a lot of problems with it, but a lot of people also like it, and to be fair, the problems I have with it aren't really important for this video, so I'll skip it for now. And while the other videos on the Toby drama were big, Spockter's was by far the biggest. I know I can't really compare it to any other videos on the Toby drama because they've all have been taken down for one reason or another. But the point is, Spockter waited patiently, joined the winning side, and got really, really rewarded for it. His subs and his reputation skyrocketed. And while he was already friends with people like Junkie and Creepshow, now he was also friends with Kai and Omnia. And if you already knew what happened to Spockter's old friends, along with his new friends, well, with friends like these, who needs enemies, am I right? Spockter uploaded a video about the Hopeless Peaches situation, but unlike the Toby drama, the situation was still ongoing. So he did and said a few things that, uh, really didn't age all too well. For example, in his thumbnail, he used something from Peach's video where she was talking about her experience being groomed. And he also used a clip from her grooming video when he was talking about her being extremely bad at relationship management. Oh yeah, he also shouldn't say she should talk about her suicidal ideation and focus more on her public image. What's very interesting to me is that Omnia was constantly criticized for using Peach's grooming video in her thumbnail, but Spockter does the same thing and, for the most part, he's ignored. I, I can't help but hold like a suspicious and skeptical taste in my mouth as I see creator after creator being dogpiled on for things they've done that are definitely worth criticism nonetheless, but absolutely blown out of proportion. Huh, isn't it funny that the videos he showed are from Omnia and Prison Mate Luke, who both have now have been cancelled down and up, along with Creepshow and Kai. Now obviously, I do have the benefit of hindsight and Spockter doesn't in this video, but isn't it amazing that the people who were winning in both the Toby and Hopeless Peaches drama all got revealed to be terrible people? Not just one or two, all of them. It's, it's intense. 
Now, before you click away, before you dislike, just hear me out. This isn't some preachy piece on any of the content creators that are making videos on Hopeless Peaches. This is an analysis, I'd like to say, for the content itself and the whole situation as a whole. Now, how this reads to me is that Spockter thinks that the drama around Hopeless Peaches is blown way out of proportion. But obviously, he's afraid of Creepshow Luke and the others, and I can't really blame him. Like, during the Toby drama, when people were against Kai and Omnia, they pointed out a few of Toby's flaws, but mostly defended her from claims people were making. And obviously, people like Luke and Thuman could just say, oh my god, people are full on defending Toby and just going after Kai and Omnia because they're small black YouTubers. And no one to this day has even covered Nani's video, yet she got a crap ton of dislikes. But Spockter spends most of the video bashing Hopeless Peaches. The only two time he defends her are against claims made by Luke and claims made by Camilla. And believe it or not, he still got backlash from people saying he went too soft on Hopeless Peaches. Hopeless Peaches is under a lot of fire right now for uh, what I can gather being intensely bad at relationship management. Oh no, Spockter, no! So for those of you who don't know, Spockter is using B-roll footage from Peach's video about her experience being groomed, right as he says she's intensely bad at relationship management. Now sure, this could just be an oversight, but it's a pretty fucking bad oversight. Now by the off chance that this was intentional, bro, that's super fucked up. If you have to go after Peaches so you can defend some of the claims against her so people will actually listen to your video, I get that, but this really fucking crosses the line. There are a lot of people that compare her actions to Toby, that of which I would disagree. And it, yes, it's true she flaunts her mental instability all the fucking damn time and it looks like a fucking excuse, but she ab and she absolutely shouldn't do it. It's true, she should not do that. However, I feel it strives more from her inability to keep things to herself and put up that emotional barrier that she needs in order to keep her public image clear. Yeah, she did it a full two times in two years. Wow. The bullshit to English translation is, Peaches should not post about her personal problems so much so people don't use it against her. But hot take here, maybe the real assholes are the ones who are taking it out of context and blowing it out of proportion to use it against her. Like I get what Spockter is trying to say, but it's such a victim blaming mentality. For the very few times I've been emotionally vulnerable on my channel, I've had it used against me, but I only have to deal with a few hate comments here and there every now and then. But Peaches got cancelled harder than fucking Kiro the Wolf for something basically everyone does. And since I'm bringing it up, the topic of race was constantly mentioned throughout the Toby drama, and I tried my best to steer clear of talking too much about that, simply because I felt as though it was unimportant to the original meaning of the criticism on Toby, and I argued that, that the discussion of race was far too amplified, and I, I still do stand by what I said given the context and the impression that I had. However, as things develop, has developed more, and I've talked to a lot more people, specifically uh, people of color, creators themselves, I've come to further realize why the conversation became so racially charged. I've gotten a clear understanding where things strive from, and from a personal viewpoint, considering I've never, I, I've grown up in a mixed bag, and I've never really experienced racism firsthand, so that's just the bubble I've grew in, so I never truly understood it, and I do apologize if it appears as though I was dismissing the racial conversation. Well, that's a lot of word salad that really doesn't mean anything. Like, I can guess a few reasons as to why the Toby drama was so racially motivated, but Spockter doesn't explain why. He just said he was informed by people without explaining explaining what they told him. But in Spockter's Toby video, he was pretty much 100% on the side of the people who were against Toby, aka the people who were winning. But this very slight disagreement about race he had with the winning people was enough to get him bashed. Like with the benefit of hindsight, it's easy for most people to say, Kai, Omnia, Creepshow, and Luke are all bitches. But people forget just how much control and influence they had over the narrative back then. This whole thing he's saying about the Toby drama should have nothing to do with the Peaches drama, but he still has to apologize because, well, Kai, Omnia, Luke, and Creepshow really love to make people walk on eggshells. So yeah, this is further proof that Spockter is clearly nervous to make this video. Uh, that's, that was not my intention. My intention was to make the other creators realize that Omnia and Kai still had fucking merit in what they were saying, and that what they were doing, criticizing them, was the wrong move. I guess this would be a good place to insert that John Swan, I mean John Tron joke about that one didn't age quite, quite so well. Like, obviously now we have the benefit of hindsight, but yeah, Kai and Omnia have been cancelled down and up. 
Like, this isn't about Spockter, but I really hate this whole narrative of Kai and Omnia were good in the Toby drama, but later they became bad people. Do you think people went after Kai and Omnia during the Toby drama because they tried to talk things out with them and Kai and Omnia pissed them off? Or they just defended Toby because Kai and Omnia were black or they were friends with Toby or something? You want to hear one of the examples of one of those big YouTubers who quote unquote went after Kai and Omnia? Well, it was Miss ZZ. What did she do? She called Kai a simp. Yep, that's it. She just called Kai a simp in a comment. The initial spike of the Hopeless Peaches criticism comes from one of Prison Make Luke's videos, Why is the Toby Drama Still Going On?, where near the end he spent a reasonable portion of his video criticizing Hopeless Peaches for involving herself in the drama throughout the comments. Okay, let me get this straight. He spent a reasonable portion of his video criticizing Peaches because she left a few comments. She didn't make a video about the situation, she just left a few comments, and Luke called her a sewer slide baiter because of it. Calls her out for using mental health in a similar fashion that Toby did. And she's been doing this for a long time, it's very manipulative, and she's always using her mental health as a pity me card, which is funny since she called out Toby for doing the same thing. Which, I mean, yeah, using mental health for pity is kind of a yikes moment. <laughs> you know what? I think Spockter is right about this situation. If this doesn't prove that Kai and Omnia were the real victims in the Toby drama, then I don't know what will. Well, according to the internet, you're right, Spockter, because using mental health for pity me points is a yikes moment. You should only use other things for pity points, like race, gender, sexuality, and other things like that. But let's read the comment Luke put up on screen. Just gonna give up on following the drama. It's emotionally exhausting and I have been in a constant stress state for a while now gonna just private and do other stuff for a while holy shit if that's not using your mental health to get pity me points then I don't know what is folks specific also, also specifically creep show okay this is not a point against Spockter but holy shit was creep show art growing fast she gained a hundred thousand subscribers from the start of the peaches drama all the way to the point where she got canceled but at least she had more subs back then than what she does now. So Sparter goes on telling Peaches she shouldn't talk about her mental health publicly, victim blames her more, yada yada. And I was gonna go over these clips, but uh, it really dragged out the video and I was really just repeating myself. But then he says something that I could not believe he actually got away with for so long. I'd say just please stop posting to Twitter and using it to output so much emotional torment. It will cause you so many issues overall and will do more harm than good because there's thousands of people who might see that and twist it and get the wrong idea. I don't want to assume that you were suicide baiting, but I also want you to know that. It's fucked up for the people around you to make the mori like that, to spread pain and fear like that, despite if you're planning on going through with it or not. Okay, throughout this video, I've been trying to give Spockter the benefit of the doubt and see things from his point of view. And I also was trying to be goofy throughout this video to, you know, entertain the people watching it. But when he said, even when you're willing to go through with offing yourself, you should keep it to yourself and not let your audience know, that was just fucked up. Even if you didn't know the full story, even if you weren't fully on Peach's side, and even if you were afraid to speak your mind, absolutely fucking none of it excuses what you said here. I'm glad you fucking took down this video, but you owe her and lots of other people an apology. And I know that might be a controversial opinion because it's very unpopular, but that's my personal beliefs. Dude, I'm autistic, and even if I had an opinion like that, I would keep it to myself. He exclaims that Peaches was furthering the drama by venting her, frust venting her frustrations out of her possibly inaccurate portrayal of her suicide baiting, which she was obviously very over-emotional about. Luke called her a sewer slide baiter. Peaches approached him in a very diplomatic way, so he decided to make a video starting a huge bandwagon against her. How the fuck was Peaches being over-emotional about it? And Luke, I wouldn't argue she was furthering the drama. I would rather argue that she's extremely over-emotional about what you said in your video, which is definitely a fault on her end, and it's a, it's, its own criticism. And I, I feel like she should have just tried to move past it calmly instead of being aggressively upset about it. Now, I guess you could make the argument that maybe Spockter fell for Luke's lies. And he didn't read the screenshots that Luke put up like a lot of other people did. But here's the thing. Spockter's video came out after Millie Malware's video. Maybe he didn't see it, except for the fact that I sent him the video. Here's the proof for it. Millie Malware went over how Luke twisted the narrative and Spockter just ignored it. 
Even if Peaches was overly emotional, did Luke really have to make an entire video on her and then make another one? And she wasn't even overly emotional, goddamn. So Spockter goes on to debunk some of the false narrative created about Hopeless Peaches, and you know what? Good on you, Spockter. You get a gold star for that. Is what I would say if Spockter didn't do everything in his power to still paint Peaches in a bad light and be as gentle as he possibly can with Prison Mate Luke. Your argument here is overdrawn, Luke. She was not lying. That's not what I see here. The main the main thing I see here is Peaches being irresponsible with her emotional output, being unable to chill out, to calm down, to try to keep her emotions to herself, which is ext an extremely different criticism entirely. Spockter, Luke is lying, you should bash him for it. And let's just say he's just stupid and he's not actually lying. Well, because you didn't make a follow-up video clearing up the misinformation after your video came out, then it doesn't matter if he's lying or not, he's still spreading a false narrative and you should have bashed him for it. It shocks me that Spockter never ever made a video called Calling Prism 8 Luke out. I guess it's because the drama around Luke wasn't actually that big. It was more of a death by a thousand cuts situation. It didn't blow up in the same fashion that the Kai drama, the Toby drama, the Hopeless Peaches drama, the Creepshow Art drama, and a lot of the other dramas that you covered did. Makes me just the least bit suspicious. But this accusation also isn't thrown at Peaches either. Peaches also exclaims that Luke was trying to lie to people as well, or lying about his interpretations of what she said. Another point that I don't feel is true. I don't believe I don't believe Luke's attempting to lie. That's not what's going on here. He was just interpreting things wrong, something that isn't good nonetheless, but he's definitely not lying. Nobody lied here. I've already explained why whether he lied or not doesn't really matter, but you can't say for certain that Prismate Luke definitely didn't lie. That's way too charitable of an interpretation to give him. For example, when she feels like she's being stalked, that wasn't an attack on you by any means. It could feel that way, given your context, but I'm reading that so much differently. Yes, given Luke's out of context context, it does look that way. Unless, of course, you, you know, read what he put up on screen. However, Luke wasn't entirely wrong throughout his video. He made a few solid points. She said how creators and fans were harassing her, when I know of no one besides myself that called her out, and I haven't talked to her since my blocking. And if any of my fans did that, I'm sorry, but she is overblowing the backlash she got, and the criticism she's got is only due to her actions during the Toby drama. Yes, she's overblowing the fuck out of things. How is Peaches the one blowing this situation up? At this point in time, she only made one video about it, but Luke, Omnia, Kai, Creepshow, and the others have made a minimum at least two videos. I said this before, but you're absolutely broken as a person, and you don't know how to treat people well because of it. Uh, okay, okay, we're done here. I had a lot more clips from this video that I wanted to go over, but I think you guys get the idea. Now, Spockter later made a follow-up video to the Peaches drama, and it's better. I'll give it that. But in my humble opinion, he still doesn't paint Peaches in a charitable enough light and he's way too easy on her opposition. Stuff like this isn't really easy to cover because there isn't really a bad guy, only bad actions. Really? Not even Luke? Like, I understand Creepshow Art, Kai, and Omnia got exposed later on, but Luke around this time still didn't fix any of the mistakes he made. I think that deserves at least a little scrutiny. Believe it or not, there are people who didn't like my Hopeless Peaches video. <laughs> More than you know, Spockter. A lot of this video is just Spockter saying a bunch of word salad that sounds nice, but doesn't really mean anything. Saying a few things that... <laughs> really didn't age all too well, and defending himself from people like Harley and Hopeless Peach's friends. And he also gives an apology to Peaches that was, let's just be nice and say, less than adequate. And so I went hard on Peaches to make sure that people understood it, this wasn't a blind defense. I, I wanted to do that so people understood I could see their side. Generally, you need to tame the other side, but you also want to let them know you can understand their end of it. And so I had a bit of a harsh tone on Peaches, a little harsher than I needed to, and I apologize for that. But the biggest problem with this video is how soft Spockter is on Creepshow Art. Now granted, the low cow leaks didn't happen yet. Spockter says he's not going to go after Peaches for the claims Creepshow Art made about her, but he's also not going to go after Creepshow because both of them don't have evidence. But the thing is, Peaches needed evidence to prove a negative. Creepshow was just making claims. If she had no evidence to back them up, they should have been immediately doubted. But then, after the lolcow leaks happened, Spockter did a video on Creepshow Art, 
So this would be the perfect time for Spockter to bash Creepshow Art for what she did to Peaches and go over the things that she probably made up about her. Well, here's every clip from that video where he mentions Peaches. And with that, I say go support Peaches. She needs some right now. Unless I missed something or Shannon was a bitch privately, Peaches is a sensitive baby and Shannon is of which I read to you just now, uh, talking about other creators like Peaches, Creepshow Art, D'Angelo Wallace, and okay, shit, man. Creepshow had been caught fueling a fire before the hopeless Peaches situation even started, basically ramping it up and preparing for it to blow up. Redirecting the conversations to other creators, other people like Peaches, Creepshow. Creepshow wished to throw others under the bus. Where things get really interesting is when Hopeless Peaches gets into the picture. When Hopeless Peaches started vague tweeting about Creepshow, Creepshow took it upon herself to kind of uh, throw that into the forum and essentially push the narrative that Peaches is being a little brat. Uh, this is where I get somewhat confused because this is where things start to delve into volatile behavior. And this is when we start to see Creepshow's vindicative nature. Her desire to seek revenge appears to be quite strong when referring to people who've angered her or who people who frustrated her. The issue is, however, I believe she knows she can't be vindicative like this on her actual platform and opts to do it on these forums instead. It honestly doesn't surprise me. Being a vindicative person is very common among people with Creepshow's personality type. Sassy, emotionally driven, impulsive. Creepshow in the forums basically guides the conversation by nudging the rest of the participants in the right direction as to what's going on, basically not allowing them to make incorrect assumptions about the situation between Peaches and Creepshow. Creepshow gives her side on these forums, but the most interesting part about this, however, is that despite knowing Peaches for a long time before, you know, even mentioning her in the forums, this is the first time that she's been brought up in the form. It's reflective of her emotional side, a side that sometimes bleed through, bleeds through in her content, but when we look here on LolCal, we can see it in its purest form. Seething rage and anger that Peaches has dropped Creepshow as a friend and basically just cut contact with. Very clear now that Peaches was dealing with someone who also wasn't really quite as stable as they make themselves out to be. Ultimately not terrible, but he never verbally says that he was wrong about Peaches. And also at this point in time, he still left up his first video on Peaches. Ultimately, despite how much Spockter did wrong, he was still in a pretty good position. If he just continued to go on his merry little way, he would have probably gotten away with, well, all of it. But then he made a video that is now unlisted about how his former community was following apart and this is really what I think was the beginning of the end. For the most part this video is actually pretty good until he starts talking about the names junkie. Ranting is doing a video on a whim because sometimes it's funny to just talk your heart out at something that angers you. Okay another bit of B footage that Oh god, really wasn't put in the best place. Yeah, I guess it is funny to talk your heart out about someone who backstabbed you and made your time on YouTube way harder than it ever needed to be. You wonder why people are trying to ruin one another in this community. It's because of this mindset that anger and wrath wins. Oh boy, you lied to people. To the gulag you go! Forget the good you did for people. Forget the fact that you basically built the foundation of my channel and helped me get on my feet, junkie. You lied about people, and someone decided to out you for it. It's time to crucify you and make you walk on eggshells. Well, junkie isn't really being forced to walk on eggshells. He's being called out for backstabbing a lot of people in the community. What Luke, creep show, and the others were doing was making people walk on eggshells. Mad Libs makes a vague subtweet that wasn't even about them. Well, she's a part of the drama now. What's that? She's upset that she's now part of the drama? How dare she? She's reviving it. Oh my god, Miss Zizi called Kai a simp. Oh dear god. Like Junkie literally said she needed to apologize for that. I mean, look at the video calling him out. I don't want your disingenuous, half-hearted, slimy bitch boy apology. That's no way to treat people on a platform. You know, this is something I think I've noticed that no one else has pointed out yet. Heaton calling Junkie a bitch boy is apparently no way to talk about another creator on this platform. But he's completely okay with Luke calling Peaches a sewer slide baiter and starting a whole bandwagon against her. Now, once again, originally I had way more to say about this video, but if I went over it, I think this video would drag and I would just be repeating what Pink Robot and Heaton Mitsuru Said. Basically, he told a bunch of mini white lies about people, something like he gave people permission to share certain DMs in a video and then immediately lied about it when it got him in trouble. 
basically throwing someone else under the bus. I don't really have a problem with Spockter saying this, but pay attention to when he said many white lies. Trust me, it's gonna be important later. But if the shit that came out about me back in 2018 was more along the lines of what Junkie is being outed for right now, I would not have any ground to stand on. Well, hindsight is 2020, isn't it? Oh God, I don't think Spockter knows how not wrong he is at this moment. So when people come at me and come and try and criticize me for not entirely defending Peaches because I've quote, been through something similar, I really haven't because you weren't being called a predator. Well, I've been falsely accused of being a predator, but I still don't think it's a one-to-one -one comparison to your situation. Just like how your and Peaches situations are not one-to-one -one comparisons. When people say your two situations were similar, they're not saying they were exactly the same. She was getting slandered just like you were. Like if people defended you, Spockter, in the same way you defended Peaches in your first video, I don't think you would be all that happy about it. Yes, what you were being accused of was far worse than what she was being accused of, but they were still both false allegations. I got away with being a shithead for two years because three creators to decided to accuse me of the wrong thing. No argument here. Now I did have a few more things I wanted to say about this video, but Heaton Mitsuru and Pink Robot already went over it and I don't want to steal their thunder. So I would highly recommend checking their videos out, especially Heaton's video. Speaking of Heaton's video, let's play a few clips from it. Hello there, my lovely Legionnaires. I wish that this was something a little more fun, but the first few commentary videos back aren't gonna be the best. However, I've given our resident lizard enough time to set the record straight, but I guess a Lily's Garden video is more important than correcting a mistake about my character. I'd like to say I'm disappointed, but in order for that to be true, I'd have to be surprised. So it should be noted that Spockter was planning to make a follow-up video about his junkie video. He made reference to it in his pinned comment, and he even talked about it on a recorded call that we'll be getting into a little bit later. And I believe he also told me that in a call, but I don't have evidence for that, so take that part with a grain of salt. But month after month after month, he never made that follow-up video until people called him out for it. The thing the CC got on me for during that debacle was leaking private DMs between him and Fran. I was a backstabber, duplicitous, untrustworthy. Did none of you think about how I got those screenshots? He gave them to me. I found out where all of these assumptions were coming from. Junkie had been actively lying to people and telling them that he had no idea I would use his screenshots. This low-life cherry gecko had thrown me under the axle at the slightest sign of danger. Wow, that was fucking quick. Yeah, let's play the whole clip, huh? I'm gonna speed it up. It's a little long. You may remember that the thing the CC got on me for during that debacle was leaking private DMs between him and Fran. I was a backstabber, duplicitous, untrustworthy. Did none of you think about how I got those screenshots? Did you think I hacked him and took them myself? No, he gave them to me. I asked him if I could use them and he said yes. I sent him my script, I published my video. So I started getting attacked from all sides by friends, colleagues, and a particular rat bitch. I had no idea why people were just assuming that I had done something considered so horrible and taboo when they were close enough to me to know that I'd never share something said in confidence and that I'd never had a track record of doing it beforehand. It made me wildly paranoid that the people in my life thought I was so awful and that they were more okay with the idea that I had taken someone's personal testimony without their consent than with just asking me if that was true. It ruined a lot of my friendships. One in particular, it took three years of processing to heal. It started the rat bitch saga, which lost me more friends. I'm not gonna talk about that today. It caused me to be isolated and targeted by a whole community of people I thought cared about me. I lost it a little. I'm not ashamed to admit my parents talked about me going onto the ward. I never did, thank God, but shit did get dark. And I had no idea at the time why. And then Gwis came around. When Gwis's video about this came out, I found out where all of these assumptions were coming from. Junkie had been actively lying to people and telling them that he had no idea I would use his screenshots. This low-life cherry gecko had thrown me under the axle at the slightest sign of danger. I was furious. I sent screenshots of our DMs to a couple of friends. I told anyone who would listen. I talked constantly about the fact that he was full of shit. And then he changed his fucking story. Now, he'd agreed to let me use the screenshots, but he didn't know what for, despite the fact that I'd immediately followed his confirmation by sending him my script. Yeah, this was one of the parts that actively fucking floored me. I cannot believe that you would actually cut out the context of what happened to make Junkie seem less harmful. This is 
fucking vile. It wasn't a mini white lie. It was an intentional and repeated deceit to keep his image clean when he was just as in it as the rest of us. And it's fucked that you would try to paint it as otherwise. Okay, I know that was a long clip, but I did get permission from Heaton to use it. Now, could Spockter have taken them out of context accidentally? Possibly, but as I continue this video, you'll see that it's more likely that he on purposely took it out of context. Anyways, now let's move on to the conversation Spockter had with Aaron Tempest. So I got around to watching the video last night and I'm not pleased with the section related to Junkie. Specifically, I don't like how you framed Heaton's video regarding Junkie. Now, I am aware that you don't know what happens in our neck of the woods, so I won't blame you for not knowing what happened. When Heaton's second video on Fran came out, a couple of now former commentators took issue with Heaton's tone and the fact that she was using Junkie's screenshots because it wasn't clear if Heaton got permission to use them or not. Now, as we know, Junkie did give Heaton permission to use those screenshots. So instead of just telling the truth, Junkie said that he didn't give permission leading to a months long drama where a couple of well-respected commentators publicly called out and caught ties with Heaton for something she didn't even do. One of those commentators was even given info from Junkie directly to use in their video against Heaton. It wasn't just that Junkie told little white lies to people about the screenshots as you implied, he actively gave people ammo to use against Heaton because he felt threatened when he realistically shouldn't have been. No one took issue with Junkie's behavior in the screenshots because as I noted at the time, they were the exact same screenshots you used in your video on Fran, which came out on the same day and no one even complained or noticed. And to add insult to injury, while Junkie was very quick to issue a public apology during the YoYo 3639 drama for things he didn't need to apologize for, he, to this day, has refused to publicly acknowledge or, or apologize to Heaton. Now, I know you didn't have ill intent with this, but presenting Heaton's video as you did came off as tone policing, if not dismissive, because not only did you not know or present the full scope of the situation, but you didn't even finish the first clip you played where Heaton didn't want an apology because she would go on to say that all she wanted was accountability. Sorry for the long post, and I hope I didn't come off as too aggressive here. I just had to get this off my chest. Interesting. That is something I didn't know actually about the screenshots. I still feel like the aggression within the video is quite fresh. It's something I'm quite actively against when it comes to approaching situations. My focus on that clip was the visceral insults that Heaton threw, not the context within those insults, aka bitch boy apology. I understand why it was like that, but it's never served me any good in the long run personally. At least publicly, haha. <laughs> Thanks for the input though. I honestly don't hate Heaton or anything. I just wanted to share my thoughts on that specific mindset. I'm glad you clarified your position. The situation with Heaton and Junkie is a lot more complicated than it appears to be, and from what I'm seeing, people have tried to downplay what happened between them in earnest. Personally, after watching the fallout of Junkie's lies play out in real time, I don't blame Heaton for the insults, especially when he refused to correct his mistake for a good three years now but we can agree to disagree on that front. While we're here, I wanted to bring up when you said you might have deserved what Pentagon and Stories did to you. I highly disagree. You might have deserved to be called out for what you actually did, but no one deserves to be falsely accused, especially not in the way they did it. Thank you, huh? Means a lot. We had to dip back into this side of things. No kidding. It was a dark time for a lot of people, and Junkie was only the tip of the iceberg. Jeez. I hadn't realized. There was a lot of backstabbing involved during that, and no one wanted to make it public in fear that the situation would get worse. I don't even fully know the details. I believe Heaton was the first to come public about parts of the whole thing, but there are still things that she kept private for the sake of other parties. To be clear, I don't fault you for not knowing. I don't even have all the details and I was watching the whole thing go down closely. However, outside parties have come out of the woodwork to make assumptions about the whole thing, and get onto Heaton's case for overreacting, which ironically is what started the entire drama in the first place. You might want to make like a pinned comment about this or reach out to Heaton directly to clear the air if possible. Okay, I'll make my own comment here. Cause I agree, I really don't want Heaton to be a focus point. If you're watching the video, it's actually pretty clear I didn't focus on Junkie as much as I thought I did. Very well. Could you join me and talk to Pussis for the moment? Sure. So let's 
take that apart, shall we? All right, now the only thing we have left to see is the call between Spockter, Aaron, and a few other people. I don't know, this was telling you guys some stuff you wanted to fill me in on. Yeah. Yeah, I might do a follow-up mm -hmm. video on my, uh, not mm -hmm. most recent video, but the video before that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, because we're, so the, the three of us have been kind of like following, um, is like the, the, the fallout essentially of Keaton's video. Um, so the four purposes would be okay if we, if we had this call recorded. Um, I'm so we need to have, have a record. <laughs> All right. Isn't it funny that Spockter and Junkie both got in trouble because they had calls that they knew were being recorded? But at the very least, Spockter didn't refer to it as blackmail like Junkie did. So I guess he's a little better in that regard. Um, in Go this ahead. case, uh, just jumping back to the white lies part, in this case, Junkie's intent wasn't intent is kind of really clear on that front his intent was he thought that he would receive heat yeah he was throwing or, heat under the bus and that's yeah. something i did state in the video and i would also like to just to to reaffirm just uh d definition wise it wouldn't be considered a white lie because mm. there was that intent behind it Cause oh, hang on. No, now you're, now you're making me look up the definition. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> uh. Oh, harmless. Oh, wait. Hang on. I used the wrong word there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Like it. Like I could see from an outsider perspective. Like in in actuality, if we like divorce it I from white lies, was the opposite. Figure. No. Oh no, I'm just- I'm just stupid. What the fuck? Hang on. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, white lies would not be the right, uh, word to use. My bad. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good, you're good. I figured. I figured because a lot of- I thought white lies weird. meant the opposite. Maybe, uh, we'll say black lies, how about that? <laughs> uh, it's just a regular lie. It's just a regular yeah, lie. It's, it's cool. just a lie. It was just a lie. It was yeah. a lie. I mean- that's kind of the main thing I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. I guess white lies would not have been the proper word to use. I didn't even realize when I put it in the script. I thought white lies meant something else. There, and, that's, it goes to show how good I know the English language sometimes. And, and You're in America, then, it's if, fine. If it's, if... So there's two options here, both of them pretty bad. Either you used a term you didn't know the definition of, which I don't buy considering how ubiquitous the term white lies are, or you're lying to my friend's faces. Now, I said before that I was more in line to believe the latter, considering, well, it's not what you said in the video, is it? Basically, he told a bunch of mini white lies about people. So you're really gonna claim that you thought it meant a big lie when you called them mini in your video? Mini big lies? So this is why I said earlier that it's more than likely that Spockter took Heaton out of context purposely. Because now, thanks to this really awful lie, it's hard to trust him. Like, I'm not saying this puts him on the same level as John Swan or anything, but it's such an awful lie. Now, I have no proof for this, so don't take my word on it, but I had an unrecorded call with Spockter where I asked him about the whole using Peach's grooming video as soon as he said she's bad at relationship management. What he said to me was, well, I didn't actually see that video. You, you downloaded a video you didn't see and use it as stock footage? That seems weird. The, it's like the more holes that start to form, or things that don't add up, it can, it can completely warp an audience's perception of what actually oh, I'm happened. Aware. I'm very aware of that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, evidently not considering the circumstances, God, it's so irritating to hear Aaron try and get something through to him and then just have it ping off his skull like a marble. You know how bad information can spread? Yeah, I bet you do. So why are you spreading it? Why are you going into a situation that, giving you the benefit of the doubt, you ran into half-cocked? You fucked this whole thing up and now you're just gonna sit here with your condescending little chuckles like you're not kickstarting the same shit except for me this time. And that's all of Heaton's video that I'm willing to show. Again, if you want to see the full thing, link down below. I highly recommend you go check it out. But Heaton wasn't the only one who made a video on Spockter. Lin Lin did as well. To be fair, it wasn't a very good video. Doodle Tones has done a pretty good job already covering it and Lin Lin has already taken it down. But all of this, plus Spockter, the 
ID video, which was received extremely poorly. No, I'm not gonna go over it. He took it down pretty quickly. And I'm also not an expert on mental illness. He made a video called Leaving the Commentary Community. Now, I'm not gonna talk about it that much, but half of it is dedicated to talking about Lin Lin. He does apologize, which, um, good on you, but he doesn't do it at the start. Like, when I came to Spockter about responding to Luke's Toby video, he told me no matter what, I should put the apology at the start of the video. Know who else did that? Hopeless Peaches. But I guess responding to a small YouTuber who's 16 was more important to him than apologizing. The only section of this video that I want to talk about is when he says this. I've already been speaking to Common about the whole thing. We've been chatting. So yeah, even Manga Common reached out to Spockter. Now why is this important? Well, I reached out to him, Aaron reached out to him, and I'm sure a few others reached out to him. If you've been watching this video in full up to this point, you probably think Spockter is kind of a bad guy. But the thing is, everybody looks like a bad person if you take all their mistakes and line them up in a row. Ultimately, this video is going to be about a, com a community that went down a slope of not even understanding them themselves, and a community that quite possibly failed to realize that mistakes are human, and mistake is a key to human improvement, and a key to self-reflection. Some people need to learn this the hard way, and others learn it over time. In this case, it's a lesson of friendship, the value and the vulnerability of it. Yes, he fucked up with the Hopeless Peaches situation, but so did I and a lot of other people. He fucked up when he talked about Junkie, so me and Aaron reached out to him. And we did this because, well, Spockter is human and is bound to make mistakes. But he seemed to continue to make mistakes more and more frequently. Several people reached out to him so he would fix these mistakes, and he just ignored them for a very long time. After getting called out publicly, he removed his Junkie video, and I believe he also changed the thumbnail on his Hopeless Peaches video. His apology wasn't the best, but it was better than Omnia's or Luke's. He actually seemed like he knew what he was apologizing for. And if this is where everything ended, I probably wouldn't be making this video. But Leo Convoy and Hopeless Peaches reached out to Spockter, and they had a recorded call with him. And it was just the most cringy shit I've ever heard in my life. I can hear you. Awesome. Why can't I hear anything? Oh, damn. Can I be heard? Hello? Hello? Um, oh, wait. There we go. That's why. Hello. Howdy, howdy, howdy. And my voice meter was being funny. Oh, I see. Awesome. Okay. Alright, yo. So, obviously, uh, uh, I'll be recording. Sounds mm -hmm. fine. Oh, shit. Lovely. <clears throat> okay. So I was gonna ask you, uh, uh oh, right. Oh. I was gonna ask you, like, uh, a few questions on a few different things. That's okay. all right. So, I'm sorry. What kind of questions I'm you got for me? I'm tired. And obviously, uh, this will be more of like a general conversation. I've more got it because uh, I'm really shit at remembering where I'm going. All right. Well, uh, I was gonna just ask, like, generally start it off, like, why you left commentary? Why I left commentary? Um, that's a good. That's that's a good question. I guess it's kind of important to note you know mm -hmm. um but um yeah one of the biggest reasons is just kind of I, i'm i'm tired i've been wanting to do it for years <laughs> yeah because i know that you've said that you wanted to do it like a while but then yeah. you never quite did. Like you mentioned that you made like a post about it in like uh, like February. That, yeah, that you February. Wanted to commentary, and then yeah, in your video uh, on Junkie, you also said like your former community. I mean, yeah. So I still consider like, it a former community. Yeah, so like what what pushed you to actually finally leave? Um well 
It's a good question. I think I, I it's like I said, it's been a decision I've been thinking on for a long time. But um I think I guess one of the main indicators for me was that it was time to leave was I mean, some of the slack I was getting for some of my videos, but then at the same regard, like that that was just the nail in the coffin for me. But uh I think what uh made me realize I wanted to start quitting was when I started relying on my medication to actually create videos. It wasn't as fun as it used to be. Okay. So like, like some of the slack that you were getting on some of the videos that like, like how did that affect that? Was that kind of the, the negativity of it? Or is that yeah. more realizing that you're, I mean, it's, it's the negative. I mean, I, it's a mix of both, you know, like, uh, <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of negativity. Um, I know that's funny coming from me, but I, uh, in my personal life, I try to be very, uh, cut dry and positive all of the time. And it doesn't really translate well into the medium. And I mean, obviously in order to kind of, uh, get clicks, you gotta be a little bit aggressive and, I've just slowly started dwindling my sanity in order to try to maintain the aggressiveness I used to have. Yeah, because the videos that you make, you don't have to be aggressive, so to speak. No, I try not to be, like, overall. Because, uh, alright, because then I'm going to ask to really cut into more of the proper stuff that I want to talk about now. Mm. Um, you mentioned videos, like like some of your videos getting slack. Any particular one? Or any particular um, ones, I mean, plural? <laughs> what? Uh, just mean like if there is a video slash videos. I mean, you've seen them. I mean, the DID video is a pretty, pretty big one. But, um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, there, I mean, overall, like, I, I've seen a lot of negativity on, uh, some of my, my creep show commentary. I've seen negativity on, uh, I've seen it on your commentary that I did on you. I, it, it's, it's all over the place. But the DID video, I was kind of like the, the big, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It was the big real uh, realization because I, I honestly put that video together like to the best of my ability. I interviewed people. I talked to people with the disorder. I talked to people who were in therapy for it. And I re genuinely uploaded it with the notion that, oh, like this video is, you know, like this is like, one of my better videos. And then I uh, ended up talking with a bunch of other people in the community and completely 180'd my perspective on that. Like during that month break that I was... Uh, just not signing onto YouTube. So you say that the DID video and the yes. and the negativity you got from that was like one of the main things, main reasons why you felt like that was like the final nail in the coffin kind of reason to leave yes. kind of all that stuff. Then why was Lin Lin the main focus of your leaving commentary video? Oh, because she was wrong. <laughs> I mean, there's a difference between, like, we'll get into that in a sec, but regardless of whether they made the best video ever or worst video ever, if you're leaving commentary first and foremost, wouldn't you rather want to speak on the things that you think that you should say rather than what a 16-year-old thinks of you? Mm no they said some pretty bad things about me i kind of wanted to kind of wanted to talk about it because like you you literally start your video like literally 13 seconds in saying that you want to clear the air and explain why you're leaving commentary and immediately cut to talking about lin lin's video yeah i don't want them thinking that lin lin's video is the reason i'm leaving then why was Lin Lin's the main focus of your leaving commentary video? Because she greatly discharacterized me. Do would you like to elaborate? 
because you didn't. I think I watched Doodle's video, video did a great job of it. Okay, well, I'm not asking what Doodle Tones thinks. I'm asking what you think. Huh? I'm asking not what Doodle Tones thinks. Hey. Hey. No. Oh, shit. What the fuck? I. Are you alright? Yeah, sorry. You sounded like you got run out my, by a train. My. <laughs> my. I think my, uh, my voice meter started being weird. I see. Very weird. Oh, hello? What? Hello? Okay. Hi? Hello? <sighs> You're, uh... Everything's breaking on your end, I have to say. So do you okay. Just, so do you I, just... I can hear. Okay, there we go. Hi. Alright. Oh. Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Okay, have you turned your voice meter off? No. I think you need to. Nah, I'm good. You think this is funny? <laughs> yes. Uh, why? I do. No, why? Uh, because I don't care. You don't care. Do you know what we're here to talk no, about? No, not really. You don't care. What are we here to talk to you about? Mm, I don't know. I have really nothing to lose. I've done nothing wrong. I have made a few mistakes, and I'm not going to be put through the ringer for it. Who's putting you through a ringer? Uh, <laughs> you. Me? I'm from Rainbow Park. Just sitting here. Yes. Talking. Okay. Tell me how I'm putting you through the ringer. You, uh, you, you guys. Let me, yeah. let me elaborate. Sure. You guys are literally about to make a whole ass video on some, like, superstitious like superstitious shit that doesn't matter it, it doesn't matter who's you well, guys and what I, video? I don't care anymore who, who, who's you guys and what video are you talking about didn't you tweet about it me no i didn't tweet anything about a video you talking about me yeah peaches you tweeted about it you're making I said, the that's why you're in Hey. Yeah, I said that I may make a video, but then I thought, hey, I'll ask you for your perspective, at least be able to talk to you. You're not, not asking for to... my perspective, you're interviewing me, and you're just, you're just asking questions you know the answer to. Yeah, because I want to know genuinely what your point of everything is, because <sighs> your video was very short. And I would like to talk to you properly, not only just about the things that I'm starting off with, but other things as well. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't you find what other it things? a lot? Well, I can skip through if you don't want to talk about this anymore. I just want, to, I just want a synopsis. What are we talking about? We're going to talk about some of the talking other things that you have covered and some of the other ways you've handled other things that are a little more troublesome than your DID video in terms of handling. Yeah, I know. I handled that poorly. Okay, I, I just told you we're going to cover some other things. That's why the so, video is not up anymore. And I just told... Are you not paying attention to what I'm saying to you? You said my DID video and the video... No, no, I down. said we're going to talk about more than just your DID video. We're talking oh, about other content. Okay. So if you're coming in here just to be flippant and be sarcastic, I mean, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. We're not here to drill you specifically about your DID video. We're here to talk to you about some of your other content. Okay. Okay. So what's the purpose of all these shenanigans exactly? Um I let me let me just let me just put it this way. You're talking to someone who has nothing to lose. I've stopped caring about YouTube. I've heard a lot of terrible things about you guys from other creators, and I quite literally don't want to deal with your bullshit. How about that? What BS have you heard? It doesn't matter. Yeah, I think it does. Because if your friends are sitting there crying about things that you have no real evidence for, I think that's kind of silly, don't you? Evidence? I'm not outing you. I'm not outing you. You don't have yeah, to I out know. somebody when you make a claim. What have you heard? 
uh, I mean, it's sort of based on uh, what I've heard, what I've seen, and how I've been treated. So treated, I'm not treated by whom? Really in the mood to treated by whom? Because it's the first time I've spoken to you. It's not the first time I've seen you in my comments. I'm sure it's not, but this is the first time I've spoken to you. So what have I said to you? It, how have I mistreated you? This is the first time you've spoken to me. Yes, directly. This time first time I've spoken to you. So what have I said to you that you think is so abhorrent? I mean, I could pull up the comment, but I really don't care. No, you do care. Otherwise, you wouldn't be stalking like this. What did you? What did <laughs> I say that you find so agreeable? You guys have a great day. I don't care. Well, that went fabulous. Ay, ay, ay. That's fine. That's exactly who he is. And that was horrific. That could have been worse. Uh. Let's hop out of this. We can talk independently. Oh my god, that was bad. The worst part was when he crumpled the bag of Wee Thins. Now I want to make it clear that before Linlin's video dropped, Spockter told me that he was thinking about quitting YouTube. I told him if he wants to, he can, but he should wait until after December. I mean, come on, Christmas ads. You make like half your money on YouTube during the last three months. And I do think he would have taken my advice, but uh, Linlin's video, Heaton's video, and everything else that was happening to him, I guess sped up the process and to him leaving. I don't think Spockter is an irredeemable asshole like Creep Shawar, Prismate Luke, Kai, Omnia, Junkie, and a few others. Maybe he thought he was invincible and he could keep getting away with things like this. Maybe he didn't understand the harm his actions caused. Maybe he felt the need to defend people like Junkie, Kai, Creep Show, and now that they were all gone, he felt alone. Maybe because of the stories and Pentagon drama, he was really paranoid and he just didn't trust people. It could be some of these things, all of these things, or none of these things. But what I find to be the funniest thing of all is that if Pentagon and Stories didn't go after Spockter, Fran would have never gone after Spockter, and she wouldn't have made that god-awful apology. And if she never made that video, Heaton would have never covered it. And if Heaton never covered it, Junkie wouldn't have backstabbed Heaton, causing them to get cancelled. And if Junkie never did that, Heaton wouldn't have made their video on him, and Spockter wouldn't have tone policed Heaton and played down Junkie's actions. And if Spockter never did that, Heaton would have never called Spockter out, which was the final straw which broke the camel's back. So in a way, due to very specific events, Stories of Pentagon did take Spockter down, and I just find that to be fucking hilarious. If Spockter wants to leave commentary, that's totally fine with me. But I really think he should address the situation and understand that not everybody is out to get him. There's one thing I try not to be, and it's a two-faced little prick. It's why more people came forward. It's because I did have a lot of people that disliked me, and I just didn't know how to handle that. If you're honest about who you are and the people you communicate with, it really, really shouldn't be an issue when little things like this get out. Stop fucking up. Because at this rate, you're not going to go anywhere by focusing on what others did wrong. It's a common repeat. Take a look at yourself. Let this be a wake-up call. Just make us proud. That's all we want. <laughs> That's not a way to live your life. Sunday morning. Video.